Before talking about the uh, radius and ulna, we are going to talk about the elbow joint. Um, we have to know how the elbow joint is formed. Uh, the elbow joint is formed like this. Uh, the head of the uh, radius articulates with the capitulum of the humerus and uh, the uh, trochlear notch of the ulna articulates with the trochlea of the humerus all to form the elbow joint. And now we're going to talk about uh, the uh, radius and ulna. Um, radius. radius and ulna are two bones in the forearm. Uh, the uh, medial bone is called uh, ulna and the lateral one is called uh, radius. Uh, this is the head of the radius and uh, this is the neck of the radius and uh, uh, this is the uh, radial tubercle of the radius and uh, uh, this is the uh, pronator uh, tuberosity or tubercle for insertion, uh, of, for insertion of the uh, uh, pronator teres muscle. Um, it's, uh, when, when that muscle contracts, uh, it causes pronation of the forearm. Um, and uh, this is uh, this uh, laterally the uh, at the at the lower end of the radius. Uh, laterally, we've got uh, the styloid process, and uh, posteriorly, we've got the dorsal, uh, dorsal tubercle. tubercle. Dorsal means posterior, so this is the dorsal uh, tubercle of the uh, radius. And um, uh, at the lower end of the radius, uh, medially, uh, we've got a knot which is called the uh, ulnar knot uh, on the uh, radius. Uh, the head of the uh, ulna articulates with this knot uh, to uh, form the inferior uh, radio ulnar joint. Um, the ulna is, is excluded from the wrist joint. Uh, yes, and uh, talking about the wrist joint, uh, we have to know that uh, it is formed only by the articulation of the lower end of radius uh, with the uh, two bones of, carp uh, of carpus, uh, which are called the scaphoid and the lunate. Uh, so uh, articulation between the lower end of the radius and uh, scaphoid and lunate in the carpus form the wrist joint. But we have to know that the ulna is excluded from the joint. It will by no way participate in forming uh, that joint. However, uh, the lower end of uh, ulna uh, does participate in forming the inferior radio ulnar joint. At the medial border uh, of the radius, we've got uh, the interosseous border for the origin of the interosseous membrane. And uh, now you're going to talk about the uh, ulna. It is the uh, medial bone. Uh, of the forearm, uh, at the uh, we have to know that uh, the head of ulna uh, is at the lower end, not the upper end. Uh, at the upper end of the uh, ulna, uh, we've got uh, two processes. Uh, posteriorly, we've got the olecranon process, and uh, anteriorly, uh, we've got the coronoid uh, process. So again, this is the olecranon uh, process of the ulna. And uh, this is the coronoid uh, process uh, of the ulna. And, and this notch over here is called the trochlear notch because it articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. And now uh, we were talking about uh, the upper end of the uh, ulna. Uh, these are very important. Uh, and now uh, we're gonna. Uh, we don't have anything important uh, in the shaft. But you have uh, but, the but yes, we do have. Uh, but uh, laterally, we do have the interosseous border for the insertion of the interosseous membrane. And we have to know that the interosseous membrane is very important as it binds the radius and ulna together and it also gives origins to some of the muscles. Uh, at the uh, lower end of the ulna, we've got uh, head of the ulna. Talking more specifically about the uh, superior and inferior uh, radio ulnar joints, uh, we have to know that the superior radio ulnar joint uh, is formed by the articulation uh, between the uh, head of radius and the uh, radial uh, notch on uh, ulna. This is it. This is the notch. The inferior uh, radio ulnar joint uh, is formed by the articulation between the uh, heads of uh, ulna and the uh, ulnar notch on uh, radius. And this is the ulnar notch on the radius. Uh, here, uh, we've got the styloid, styloid process. process of the ulna. ulna. We have to know that the styloid process of ulna is smaller than the styloid process of 
uh, radius. Now we're going to talk about the bones of the carpus. Um, uh, we're going to start uh, laterally to medially. Uh, this is the scaphoid. Uh, this is the lunate. Uh, this is the trichetral. Uh, this is the pisiform. Uh, this is the, uh, yes, uh, we've got two rows, of course. We've got the uh, proximal row uh, having uh, four bones and uh, the uh, distal row uh, having four other bones. Uh, so, scaphoid, lunate, uh, trichetral, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, uh, capitate, and hamate. And we have to know that this uh, tubercle over here is called the hook of hamate. Uh, okay, so. Now, uh, uh, this is, these are the uh, metacarpal bones and these are the phalanges. And uh, we have to know that uh, the bases of the uh, metacarpal bones articulate with the bones of the distal row of the carpus uh, to form the carpometacarpal joints. So we have five carpometacarpal joints. So this is the first carpometacarpal joint or carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. This is the second, third, fourth, and fifth carpometacarpal joints. So we have to know the uh, proximal. Uh, the proximal uh, ends it's are base. bases, and the distal ends mm -hmm. are heads. And uh, between in, them. in between them is shaft. Okay, so these are the bases of uh, metacarpal bones. Uh, these are the heads of the metacarpal bones, and these are the shafts of the metacarpal bones. Um, so, uh, numbering them uh, is from uh, laterally to medially. Uh, this is the first, uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth metacarpal bones. And then uh, we've got the uh, phalanges. Of course, uh, between the phalanges and uh, metacarpal bones, we've metacarpal got joints. Uh, they are called the uh, metacarpophalangeal joints. Metacarpophalangeal joints. So, this is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth metacarpophalangeal joints um, and about the phalanges uh, for the uh, thumb uh, we've got only two phalanges uh, the proximal and uh, distal uh, phalanges so uh, we do not have uh, a middle uh, phalanx um, for the thumb this is important so um, in the uh, if we take a look at the uh, metacarpal bones we can see that uh, these four uh, are uh, about the same length. However, uh, this one over here, uh, the metacarpal bone of the thumb, is shorter and uh, most mobile than the others. So uh, there's a lot of movement. Uh, there's a lot more movement in this uh, than the bone uh, than of the uh, other metacarpal bones. Uh, so. Um, uh, yes. Okay. So uh, between the uh, phalanges, we've got interphalangeal joints. Inter means between, uh, so we've got uh, joints between the uh, phalanges and they are called uh, interphalangeal uh, joints. So uh, this is the interphalangeal joint uh, of the thumb. Uh, this for example. Name of fingers. Uh, yes, okay, so here we have to know the uh, name of the five fingers. Uh, okay, so. Uh, this is the thumb. Uh, this is the index yes. finger, this is the middle yeah. finger, ring. this is the ring finger, and this is the little finger. Uh, okay, so, uh, for example, uh, if we put a spot in here, then uh, this would be the proximal uh, interphalangeal joint of the index finger. Uh, and this would be Media. the uh, distal, no, uh, the, I'm talking about the, uh, the joints. joints. Uh, we've got two interphalangeal joints in the index finger, the proximal and the distal. So this is the distal interphalangeal joint of the index finger and uh, so on for the others. So uh, we've got two interphalangeal uh, joints for each of these four uh, digits uh, but we've got only one interphalangeal joint for the thumb. And now uh, going back to the phalanges, uh, we've got two phalanges for the thumb, proximal and distal without a middle one. Uh, for each of the other four fingers we've got uh, three phalanges so we've got the proximal phalanx, the middle, and distal phalanges. So if we put a spot uh, in here, for example, then uh, this would be the uh, proximal uh, phalanx of the ring, ring. finger. Uh, or if we put a, a spot in here, uh, this would be the middle phalanx of the little finger. 
Um, okay. I think that should be all.